Hi, Terry Runyon here. I'm here to talk to you about a new understanding that has completely changed my life. And I think you might find it very interesting because it's available to all of us. If you think about thoughts like you think about the waves in the ocean, the one thing that's consistent is they come and go without any effort on your part. What is constant in this scenario is the ocean. The ocean out of which all these things happen. And what I'm here to share with you is the fact that we are the ocean. We are not the thoughts, the waves, and the things that happen and ripple around on the surface. We have infinite potential, infinite creativity at our disposal at all times. As I move forward with my artwork, this thinking comes up and I can rest in the knowing that all is well, that these thoughts that I have come and go. And the cool thing about that is the more I lean into that understanding, the more space I have for new thought to come up, thoughts I haven't had before, or those creative sensations, those, as I like to call them, quickenings of energy that draw me into the next step. So I'm gonna go ahead with that now. Feels like the right thing to start painting, so here we go. I'm gonna turn on my camera. Okay, I've got that turned on. I'm gonna be cutting back and forth and show you what I'm up to. I'm gonna begin with um, using my iPad to generate a few sparks, just to get some things kind of churning around outside my old things that I always do. It's always good for me to kind of refresh my palette by looking through some images and just kind of kick up some other ideas, colors, shapes. That helps me to move forward with a sense of enthusiasm or some sort of expansive energy where I'm kind of like, ooh, I want to try that. So that's what I really pay attention to when I'm looking through stuff or I'm looking out the window or I'm looking at my cat. Whatever it is you love to look at when you're creating, oftentimes this may happen with you too. Once I start creating, the actual piece itself takes over and starts to grow out from me seeing it. And there's like an interaction between myself and what I'm doing that we're kind of, it's kind of like we're inspiring each other or something. I can't explain it. It's all a mystery. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through my Pinterest board and I'll be back with you in a second. I don't know if you guys have this thing with your animals or pets. I really wanted to share him with you. Cat hair. Also, I'm really hot right now. So continuing to look through this panel and seeing what feels like the thing I want to start working on. I know what I've been doing over the last few days and I try to mix up my colors so I'm not doing like a yellow every single day. Or actually the other thing is Sometimes I'm painting around the shape, so I'm leaving the negative space. I'm gonna show you. And so I start doing this thing where I'm making the shape outside the cat, right? And then that shape that's being left is the cat, right? As I go along, I wanna fill back in. So you get the picture. I'm leaving what I want to be the character in the white, and I'm filling back in to get that solid background. There's the cat shape, all right? So I've left a negative space, just the white of the paper, and painted around to create the image. Here's a really good example of the negative shape being left. You could go around a shape like that in orange, and then come back in later and put details in the shape. That's pretty fun. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna go ahead and use this as my starting point, my inspiration, because I love the orange background and the little details that are in here. My goal is not to copy this. I look at this not directly. I am I have a sense of it, like it's over there and I can refer back to it if I feel like I need it, but I don't have to study it. I, I know what I'm trying to get to here. So I'm going to set this aside and go ahead and start painting. I'm going to bring my palette in a little closer and I always have some paper towels nearby. So I'm going to get the cat hair off. So I have this general idea of what I'm looking to do. And I'm going to mix up some orange using yellow and red and like I always do I get a lot of paint going on so that I have plenty there. 
I'm thinking about elephants, so you might as well go with it, right, when you're thinking about something in particular. And elephants are fun because they're kind of a simple shape. I've got this shape here that doesn't feel like an elephant shape, but I'm going to still make it an elephant. I'm just going to do it a little differently. And since I have more space here, I'm going to go ahead and make one, one more elephant. So if this is inspiring to you to make an elephant shape, I, I really encourage you just to go ahead with that. Maybe an, any animal shape that you feel like creating, but if it happens to be an elephant because you're watching me paint an elephant, then I suggest you go ahead and paint an elephant. Those, those feelings and a sense of wanting to move forward with something don't hit us by accident. So go ahead and play with an elephant if you want, or you could make it into a turtle. Maybe it's a cat. Just whatever's moving you in the moment to go ahead and, and move with it because that's really what we're aiming at here is to pay attention to that sense of inspiration. I also highly recommend not to pass those by. You know, when you notice them, you may be like me and want to keep rifling through research or keep looking at things or here's a biggie or saying, I'll get to that later, I'm really inspired. That never works for me. Once that inspiration comes up, if I don't act on it in the moment, 99% of the time it's not there anymore once I do go back to paint or I don't feel inspired anymore. One of the most amazing things that changed my production level, my joy in working with painting and drawing and working on the iPad has been this moving with that sense of inspiration in the moment is when that will happen. It, it may or may not, most of the time not, happen later when you try to pick it up again. Once again, I'm going to mention Elizabeth Gilbert's book, Big Magic, because she tells the story of a, a poet that an idea comes to while she's out in the field, and she goes running to catch this inspiration, to catch this idea and get it down on paper. She's running back to her house to get the paper to write it down. And that's kind of how it feels to me, that if we just kept standing in the field, the idea comes by, or the sense of, for me, it feels more like it's coming up from the inside out. If we keep standing in the field, then another thought will come through, because that's the nature of thoughts. They're like waves. Remember that you will always have new ideas. It's easy to get into the cycle of continuing to generate idea after idea after idea and never get anything down on paper or recorded or videoed and then it's gone because it's gonna be replaced by the next idea. So I really like to encourage people to go ahead and move with that inspiration as it's happening and know that whatever ideas are coming down the pike will be there, they'll keep coming. There's no point at which they're ever gonna be gone. There's really no such thing as a block. Um, I'm waiting for this paint to dry. I'm gonna give it a little hair dryer time. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay, now that my paint is dry, I'm going to go back in with another color to put in some details. For right now, it feels like the color I want to move with is a, this is called Payne's Gray. I use Winsor Newton watercolors, and this Payne's Gray really takes the place of black. It's got more richness to it than black. It has a little bit of a blue, blue gray. It's what I used here for this cat. I'm going to use it for some details. I'm going to get it pretty watered down here and I'm going to use it for my ears. I got a little drip on my painting and now that's going to be where the eye goes. So that's a good example of letting your painting lead you. I didn't plan on that drip, but 
there you go. So I've got my little elephants going here and my ears a little dry. That hair dryer is really hot, but we know how to fix that. Okay, now I'm gonna get my black permanent pen. You can paint back in and not have them smear, which is awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and start creating my details. You know, I have thoughts coming up. Oh, you're not doing the same number of toes on those or whatever kind of thoughts you have. And I just basically ignore those thoughts and realize it doesn't matter. There's no rules here. I could do whatever I want. I could have seven toes if I want. So there's a little elephant so far. And now we need something else because this does not feel done to me. And it come, becomes almost a greeting card immediately because it's this little flower is being given to its friend. I don't fret a whole lot about my flower shapes. I know that everybody has their own kind of flower shapes they like to make. And flowers are really awesome because they're in all colors and shapes. I might be getting close to being done with this. Art doesn't have to be complicated. Everyone has their own aesthetic as to how detailed they like to make things. I usually enjoy working in a more simpler style. Doesn't always happen. Sometimes it gets away from me and I, I go too far and it's hard to redeem it. And that's just part of how it is with art. So even something that feels like you went too far is still okay. That's just part of how we we learn and particularly with sketchbook you're not trying to do finished art all the time. You're playing, you're having fun, you're practicing. I wouldn't even call it practicing. I'd call it just making art and we never know what we're gonna get. At least the way I work. So this is starting to feel a little bit more done. I love the creative process because anything that happens that you didn't plan is absolutely perfect to what you're trying to do here. For me, the more surprise I can have while I'm working, the better. Letting go of those thoughts that come up that try to stop me. I just keep going and realize that this painting doesn't turn out just like I wanted, which normally they don't, but sometimes they're way more or better or I don't know, I feel more satisfied with the painting that does come up and show up for me. I didn't really have a plan to begin with, and as I go along I start to think about things and think I have a plan, and often those are go by like that wave again, and I settle back into this okayness and keep moving forward with what's in front of me. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. I know there was a lot of talk during this, but I really wanted to share with you. Okay, here's Riley her little wet chin. Are you gonna go to sleep there, Riley? And she usually likes to have one foot in my palette as well. So here we have the setup. We've got our cat, we've got our palette, our art, a few lights, the webcam, and another cat, just like we like it. So that's all I've got for you guys today. I would love to have your comments or questions down below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. I would love it if you subscribe. I'm going to be talking about the things you guys bring up in the comments as well as just ideas that come through my noggin. To know more about when these videos are coming, I let my email subscribers know. You can subscribe on my website at terryrunyon.com. And thanks so much for watching and I look forward to connecting with you again soon. Take care.